Now, last week we ended up getting our second installment of the Season 1 Reloaded content within Cold War, but we're already gearing up towards Season 2. This last update was the final update for Season 1 in terms of content distribution, so while we wind down on Act 1, we are getting closer to Act 2, and we actually have a little bit of information on what to expect with what is coming in Season 2, including weaponry that could be on offer, as well as the reintroduction of a customization system that many seem to like within Black Ops 4, that being reactive camos. So today we're going to break down everything you need to know about both categories of leaks here and keep you in the know with all of it. As we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. Are you looking forward to any of these items? Maybe say the new weapons, the new reactive camos, maybe how both of them work within Warzone. Whatever it is, feel free to let me know. As well, if you are new to the channel, do be sure that subscribe button. We're on the road to 400,000 subscribers and we'll keep the day with all things Cold War, Warzone, and anything COD related. So if you're interested in joining the community, I'd love to have you. That said, let's jump into the leaks. So today's information is courtesy of Tales Doll 553. We've discussed their findings here on the channel before. They've data mined plenty of stuff in the past, but as with all things that are data mined, do take it with a grain of salt as it's an indication of what's to come. But as with all things in development, before it actually reaches live, it's still all a work in progress. So things definitely could be subject to change, but Tails has been incredibly accurate on the amount of things they've pulled in the game in the past. Additionally, as with all data mine things, any images can't be shown due to copyright issues, but I can leave the link down there in the description below to Tails' account for you to check out things in a more full environment if you wish to do so. But let's start out with the weaponry here. Right now, we know of five different weapons that have been data mined out of the most recent update here and the most recent build of the game. So far, that's two primaries, two melees, and what may be one special weapon, perhaps. The primaries, let's start out there though. Firstly, we know of the NTW-20, named in the files as the T9 cannon, T9 being the prefix for Black Ops Cold War, but it's a bolt action rifle with high damage and a one-shot headshot potential that also has that one-shot range extend down to locations such as the chest and the shoulders as well. This one being an anti-material rifle, one that packs a higher punch, but may have some of those trade-offs that we saw in similar introductions of, say, Modern Warfare and the Rytek. So we'll have to see how this all plays out if it's something that takes a while to ADS in comparison to other snipers, if it has a very high damage profile for maybe some lack of mobility attributes, whatever it may be, we'll have to see. But there was that rumor that the Dragonov was going to be introduced, and honestly, I'll take this sniper over the Dragonov any day. I feel like every introduction that we've seen of the Dragonov in the entire COD franchise has been subpar to say the least, so if that was going to be introduced with Season 2, I don't know that I would use it all that much, especially after unlocking it, so to have something that I might actually play around with, I'm cool with that. Next, we have the AI LC-10, an SMG also referenced in the game files as the SMT-9 Accurate. The only information that we have here comes with this that it's a fully auto submachine gun. Even the in-game files point towards this being a temporary description. So admittedly, there's not too much known here about this one, but it looks to be interesting if the SMGs are anything to go by in Cold War and in Warzone, with a lot of contenders coming right out of the gate, but also with the most recent introduction to the SMGs of the MAC-10, it could raise a lot of questions as to how it it stacks up, if at all. So we'll see how that one works out. But then as for the melees, first we have the machete. Coming in with a description that it's manufactured from a durable steel blade, tempered to maximum toughness to resist chipping and breaking, popular in many tropical countries as both a weapon and an agricultural tool. Summing up what is an accurate description of the machete instead of just a COD-centric description of it by giving some real-life descriptions. But interestingly, this one actually has a challenge associated with it, in which it tasks you with getting three kills while injured with the knife in X amount of matches. Now that X is a variable that isn't specified just yet in the strings of code and will likely be disconnected until closer to the launch of the weapon, but this will seemingly follow suit with other melees as a mid-season weapon as a result. Then we have the E-Tool, which is a shovel, as the final melee, in which we learn from these leaks that it's described as a military-style trifold entrenching shovel, typically used to dig a defensive fighting position, but is equally as effective as an ancillary weapon in close quarters combat. Again, same with as the machete, we actually do have a challenge associated with this, where this one tasks you with getting three kills with a knife without dying in X amount of games. Again, also noting that the X is a variable here, they'll be swapped out for a proper amount closer towards the launch of the weapon, when it's specified, but 
the strings are awaiting that value to be inputted before being associated with a specific number. Now, interestingly, that fifth weapon here outside of the primaries and the secondaries is one that may be another crossover in relation to something we've already seen in Modern Warfare, but we also only know of this because of new shop items that were introduced on the back end, this being the crossbow. Thanks to the introduction of the bundle, the Archaic Range, we'll see that we'll get the inclusion of what is described as the first legendary blueprint for the Cold War crossbow but nowhere else is this mentioned, and it's an interesting turn of events to see because this really wasn't something we theorized would be coming once we saw all these things start to come to light at the beginning of season one and as we progressed throughout the season so far. So it's definitely interesting. As for timing, this is where things get a little confusing and where also it's best to consider the prospect that these things are absolutely still subject to change, but Tails believes the melees as well as the NTW-20 may be mid-season weapons or weapons introduced throughout the season. Perhaps the NTW is that one one that's truly a part of a mid-season content addition, with melees being introduced intermittently as they have been beforehand. But the thought comes from the fact that there are bundles associated with each of these weapons. Theoretically, this both can and can't hold up, depending on how you look at it. It really all comes down to what Treyarch has planned, so I'd say it's about a 50-50 chance, really, that all three of these come later in the season, and not some included at launch. We have seen weapons go a season without any shop introductions and blueprints there, but we've also seen weapons have bundles with blueprints introduced later in the season, while also some weapons have only been launched alongside bundles. The melees, I have no doubt, will be coming mid-season alongside bundles, but the NTW, that one trips me up because we've seen, again, weapons held off until their sister bundle is introduced, but also we've seen them introduced right off the bat with a bundle coming later on in the season. My thought is that we'll see the latter because otherwise we're left with one weapon up front for the launch of Season 2, which isn't something we normally see, so if not the Sniper and the SMG, what else would fill that space at the launch of Season 2? But other than that, the really interesting part about these recent findings is that it looks like reactive camos are returning. First, we saw with Season 1, and the findings actually happening a little before the launch of Season 1, that Mastercrafts would be coming back in the fashion that we see them now. Those Mastercrafts that we saw introduced were the ICB rifle for the AK-47 that blasts off when you inspect it and comes with a blast radius bullfrog. Then we saw the collector's item AK-74U that had a push button and a laser sight spotting animation that came along with a noob tube thumper. And we still have one that is yet to be released of the FFAR Mastercraft that will play a few classic Treyarch songs on a tape deck built into the weapon. Those were brought back with specific weapon animations for the Mastercrafts and add a little flair that really isn't necessarily needed, but is there for some cool designs that were noteworthy, carrying on something that cosmetically did well for Treyarch. But now it seems like according to Tales that reactive camos will be returning in a similar fashion to Mastercraft bundles within Cold War and likely Season 2, though not exactly as they were seen within Black Ops 4. Found in the files were the bundles of the Tracer Pack Rosé Reactive Bundle and the Samantha Maxis Reactive Bundle. The Tracer Pack Rosé Reactive Bundle lays it out a bit more clearly on how you can expect reactives to work, with weapons included noting that one blueprint evolves as you get kills, and both weapons include Pink Tracer Fire. So, it seems like, unlike Black Ops 4, at least post-update to Black Ops 4, that reactive camos won't be able to transfer to other weapons if you end up having one of them which is kind of a bummer if you ask me. That was the reason why people wanted it to be changed and why it was changed in the first place for Black Ops 4. It offered more customization to any weapon you wanted instead of just sticking to one weapon and monetarily speaking, I'm not sure why they wouldn't do that again here because I'd be way more inclined to buy an item that I know I can use on multiple weapons rather than just one that I may use here and there. But anyways, the Samantha Maxis Reactive Bundle also comes along with a new operator of Samantha Maxis, which can be used in Cold War and Warzone, but curiously, both of these bundles don't actually showcase what weapons will be introduced here in a reactive state. But I'm definitely interested in the prospect of seeing this happen. What I'm definitely excited for and really interested to see is how these effects transfer over to Warzone because you all know that that's my preferred mode of play and, well, I like camos, so to be able to see those introduced, I think it'd be really cool. We saw that Cold War's integration already sort of started to break that air quote realism design element with the animated DM Ultra camo, so seeing reactive and changing weapon camos would be pretty cool and wouldn't be too far-fetched if you ask me. It also has me wondering though when we'll see the Cold War Zombies camos introduced into Warzone so that I can get that motivation to start grinding out Dark Aether again, but as for the rollout times of these, the weapons and the reactive camos, I'd imagine that we see those happen starting with Season 2 and then rolling out progressively as the season goes along. And we're only a few weeks away at this point, a little over two weeks, so we're getting there and we should start to see more promotion come out. But as for elite content, this may be all we have until launch. I'm not really 
probably expecting another larger update for Cold War, at least not a title update. So until then, these files in the game right now are all we're going to have until more are introduced with the Season 2 launch. But the future is definitely shaping up for something that could be special come Season 2. I mean, perhaps that's also when we see the Psykov and the CX-9 introduced for Modern Warfare, as well as SOAP and those other maps that have been leaked in the game files. But if that all happens, that's going to be a rather big Season 2 launch. So we'll see where we go from here. But for now, that's everything we have. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. What do you guys think of these? Are you looking forward to any of these new weapons? Maybe the reactive camos? Whatever it is, let me know. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you aren't new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe. So I'm a single thing earning all things Cold War, Warzone, and anything COD related. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get cacknots out of YouTube. Practice on both those. If you guys want to check up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. Honestly, Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.